Namaste. So this is really me now. <laughs> if you survived the introduction, this is about Ajatavada. Uh, this whole series, the last three videos, are about Ajatavada. And Ajatavada is non-dual consciousness and reality. So this whole series, I've been speaking and acting from the Ajatta platform. And judging by the comments, people aren't getting it. They're asking the same old dualistic kinds of questions. Why does the intro have all these eyes coming out at you? Huh? Because what am I doing here? I'm giving views, many, many different views covering the whole spectrum of consciousness from Dvaitavada all the way to Ajatavada. Now, if you've been watching these series for any length of time, you should know what this means. It means in Ajatavada there's no duality. So I'm not making reference to any external standards or scriptures or doctrines or teachers <laughs> or authorities or anything external. This is all coming from my internal experience in meditation. That's why the first video started off with a session of me in deep meditation. So one guy at quoted some authority, huh? Ramana Maharshi, and then demanded to know whether I agree or disagree. <laughs> it doesn't get any more dualistic than that. That's the kind of thing someone in Dvaitavada would ask. See, this is why the Buddha, oftentimes when he was asked a question coming from a duality, framework or duality consciousness, Dvaitavada, he would refuse to answer. I mean, Dvaita means two, right? But the Buddha's logic was actually a fourfold system. It's true, it's false, it's both true and false, or it's neither true nor false. Uh, this is called the quadrilemma. The quadrilemma, four valued logic. But in West we have two valued logic, Aristotelian logic, binary logic, one and zero, true and false, right and wrong, good or bad. And this colors our whole understanding, or maybe I should say misunderstanding, <laughs> of the spiritual realm. So when people view a Jatavada content through the lens of duality, they completely distort everything. And then they want to know, do you agree or disagree? Well, the Buddha would say, not a valid question. Why is it not a valid question? Because he is speaking from Ajatavada. I am speaking now in this series from Ajatavada. So questions based on duality are not valid because they assume dualistic logic, right and wrong, good or bad, up and down. <laughs> One or zero, true or false. But the realm where I reside, and actually where you reside too, you just haven't realized it yet, is the realm of Turiya. Now, why is Lord Shiva seen with a trident, a trishul? Huh? Because the three states of consciousness, Dvaita, or uh, Jagrat, Vishishta Dvaita, or Svapna, and Vivarta, 
or sushupti. These three states of consciousness are mounted on the staff of Turiya. So Turiya is the basic awareness from which consciousness is generated. Three types of consciousness depending on the type of objects. So, when the object of awareness is consciousness itself, you're in Turiya. So everyone is actually in Turiya, observing the other three states of consciousness. <laughs> you have to understand this, at least intellectually, to comprehend the point of view of one in Turiya. Huh? So there are all these views, so many different views and different states of consciousness with different backgrounds. Huh? Anytime you have a view, you have a point of view. What is a point of view? It's where the viewer is. Like, if I'm standing on the ground, my point of view is about five feet above the, above the surface. Huh? But if I get in, let's say, a balloon or a small plane, and I'm flying, you know, three, four, five thousand feet up in the air, then my point of view is completely different. And even though I'm looking at the same location, what I see is much greater, much more complete. And similarly, if I'm on the International Space Station, I could be over the same exact location, but my view encompasses like, you know, one third of the planet or something like that. And if I'm in a spacecraft far, far away from the Earth, then I see like half the Earth at one time from the same point of view, uh, the same location, I should say. The point of view is much higher, so the view is more complete. Now, the same thing is true of consciousness. When a person is a two-legged animal huh, that has no, co no connection with God at all, a pashu or a putujana in the words of the Buddha, then all he knows is this body. Huh? And maybe he has some beliefs in religion or culture or race, country, politics, whatever. He has some beliefs in these abstractions. But he doesn't have any living connection with God. He's an animal, Pashu. Pashu actually means rope, because an animal is always kept on a rope. And similarly, we see in society today, now the internet and money and all kinds of other nonsense is used to control the masses, the Pashu. But then, once one develops a connection, yoga, huh? yoga means connecting. Like, it's from the word yukt. The verb yukt means to connect, literally to yoke, like an animal to a cart. So when we are connected, in service with God. Now, instead of religion, we have karma yoga. Karma yoga means we serve God in different ways, according to the particular form of God that we are in relationship with. So when this matures, it becomes bhakti. And in bhakti, we have a direct relationship. I mean, there's still the service relationship, but now it's face to face. God is not far away. God is right here. God is in my heart. So God is never absent. Huh? God is always present or goddess. And I am always in his or her presence. And finally, at the mature stage of bhakti, one realizes 
I am one with God. There is nothing that I could call myself that is not God. So therefore, what I used to call myself now, I see as God. Not that I'm present with God in a duality, but I'm in union with God. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Yogo Yukta Prasanatma, Na Sochati Na Kankshati. One who is in union with God, Yogo Yukta, Prasanatma, his soul is delighted. Huh? Prasanatma, Na Sochati Na Kankshati. He neither laments nor desires to have anything. Why? Because he has everything. <laughs> he has everything and he is everything. So each of these stages has a wider and wider point of view. And from the point of view of the higher stage, the lower stages look very cramped and narrow. Huh? So the ultimate point of view is a jatta. It means the world is not born, ajata. The world is not born. It never was. It was always just an illusion, just an appearance, a very convincing illusion, a very engaging dream, huh? a long dream as long as our connection with this body lasts. We have this dream that the world is real and what we see through our senses is the actual truth. <laughs> but philosophically, we can demolish that very easily and it's a long-standing issue in solid, um, psychology and philosophy that the existence of objective reality cannot be proved. The only thing we know is what is reflected in our consciousness. And that means what we perceive through the senses and the mind. But if we accept anything in the senses and mind as reality, then we're in trouble because it's impermanent, unsatisfactory, and not self. So self ultimately means consciousness or pure awareness without an object. This is a jatavada. A jatavada means residing in pure awareness. So then, what do we see? Well, we see everything. <laughs> We see God, we see the world, we see action and reaction, we see all kinds of different qualities, huh? but we are very much aware that these are only appearances, they're only illusions, because they're temporary, non-satisfactory, and not self. Well, what is self then? Pure awareness, turiya, nirvana, nibbana, uh, self-realization, enlightenment, God. And there's no doctrine in this space. There's no philosophy. Uh, there's no kind of logical arguments. Is this right or wrong, or <laughs> whatever? <laughs> that we left all that behind when we transcended duality. See? So it's very amusing to me when I do a video on non-duality, and then people make comments and ask questions according to duality. It's like, duh. <laughs> you know? You didn't really get it. So, well, I wasn't going to uh, reference out, outside a, uh, authority, but I want to tell a story 
that Ramana Maharshi, when people used to say, oh, I'm not enlightened, please help me get enlightened. Huh? He used to say, well, are you conscious? And they would go, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> he goes, are you conscious of being conscious? And they go, yeah, yeah. He goes, okay, you're enlightened. That's Turiya. So everybody is in Turiya all the time. Another way of saying that is everybody is enlightened. But because we believe that points of view in duality show reality, uh, it's a false belief. It's ignorance, actually. But because we believe these things, we create other points of view on lower levels of consciousness. And then we get sucked into that and think that that is real. But it's not real. And we can prove it. I think I just did, didn't I? <laughs> if you weren't in Turiya, you wouldn't be conscious of being conscious. Huh? That's an animal. An animal is not conscious of being conscious. They're conscious, but they're not conscious of being conscious. Only humans can do that. And humans do do that. So simply to be born in the human form of life is to be enlightened. But because of various schemes by nefarious people wanting to control and own and use others, they create all these lies, these abstractions, like money and morality and religion and countries and politics and laws and so many other nonsense. And then they all act as if those are real and they want us to do so too. But if we simply drop all those other points of view and just reside in Turiya, that's the top of the mountain. That's, that's the intergalactic spacecraft looking back at Earth and seeing, oh, this is nonsense. Huh? You don't have to believe in any of that stuff if you don't live here. See? The only reason you believe in any of that nonsense is that you identify with the body and the mind. But if you live on the mountaintop, if you live in Turiya, in non-duality, then you're just a visitor here. Huh? The laws and the beliefs and the ideas and all of that do not apply to you. Yes, you can still maintain a body. Well, the body is maintained by its karma. Prarabdha karma, the ripened karma for this lifetime. So even if you become a siddha, even if you attain self-realization, huh, the body keeps on going more or less like a marionette, like a puppet. And you're simply watching it from the top of the mountain. Sahasrara. So this is enlightenment, this is meditation. And you don't have to sit in a certain way or, you know, use a mantra or any of that. You can be in that state of consciousness at all times because you already are. And you always have been and always will be in the state of Turiya. Huh? In the Sushupti, the thousand petal lotus. So this is the aim of meditation, ajatavada. This is self-realization. This is enlightenment. And this is the purpose. This is the cause of the existence of the whole universe. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shaktihi Aung.